So there was this judgment of the Supreme Court of India, which has been spoken about a lot. This judgment was by Honorable Chief Justice Dr. Tananjay Chandrachud, and this was about the question before the court whether Section 37 of the Architects Act 1972 merely prohibits the use of title architect by individuals not registered with the Council of Architecture or it actually prohibits unregistered individuals from carrying out the practice of architecture and its cognate activities. Basically, this is a very important question, but this question is not new. We want you to look at that in India, the architects are registered under the Architects Act 1972. This is not a new piece of legislation. But before we go into the details of the Architects Act, we have to look at the circumstances and the discussion and debate in the Parliament of India that happened when this act was getting passed. It is very important to look at that. And that debate is available on the public domain. So before going further anywhere else, we have to look at an important portion of this debate. And in this, we have to look at what Shri M. H. Samuel said. He said that each time we discussed one definition. We came up against a dead wall. Then ultimately, the whole committee came to the conclusion that it is better not to define an architect but merely confine an architect registered under this act. This was one of the fundamental changes that the Joint Select Committee thought it was wise to make. I personally have no regrets for making it and I am happy to say that the President of the Institute of Engineers and the President of Institute of Architects both came forward with the same suggestion. It's in double quotes. All right, sir, leave out the definition. Let us just be registered architects. As a matter of fact, the President of the Institute of Architects, Mr. Bhalla, who appeared before the committee, was very cooperative. He wrote a letter to the committee suggesting that this definition need not be there at all. And he is a man who has been demanding for the architect's bill. He wanted somehow that the bill should be passed as quickly as possible. As a result of this, certain consequential changes had to be made. Now, anybody can design and erect a building without calling himself an architect. We are talking about 7th May 1970, two years before the Architects Act was passed, and this is the discussion happening in the parliament. Let me go on. If it was a big change. He has met the viewpoints of both engineers as well as architects. Therefore, we confirm the view that we are only protecting the title of architects and not the profession of architects. You will find these subsequent changes in the clauses 33, 35, and 36 of the bill that has been reported upon the Joint Select Committee. Now, this is not a coincidence. So now when you look at the judgment, you can see what the judgment has said. The judgment has also said that for the reasons stated above, in response to the first question, we affirm the decision of the High Court of Allahabad and hold that Section 37 of the Architect Act does not prohibit individuals not registered under the Architects Act from undertaking the practice of architecture and its cognate activities. Now, let us go to the Section 37 of the Architects Act. Section 37 of the Architects Act also talks about prohibition against the use of title. Very clear. It says that after expiry of one year from date of appointment, date appointed under the subsection 2 of section 24, no person other than the registered architect or a firm of architect shall use the title and style of architect. So this is very, very clear. This is there in the debate in the parliament. This is there in the Architects Act. This is there in the judgment which has interpreted it. 
Now, what is the solution to this? Whether it is a solution or not, is that we have to understand that the profession can be protected only by legislative action. Now, you can talk about whether lawyers have such protection, whether doctors have such protection, and whether architects should also have such protection by that logic. Well, they have that protection because their own pieces of legislation clearly define the profession and what all will be included in the particular services that those professionals provide. So the solution is a legislative solution and the legislative solution is possible when we look at the amend proposed Architects Act and that is the Architects Amendment Bill 2018. Here it is clear that they have suggested or proposed the amendment in Section 2 where they have not only said use the word entered the register and they have also included the line and duly empowered under the act to provide architectural services and what are architectural services including providing an architectural design plans preparation of all drawings and documents tracing or the like for use in sanction and for construction extension addition or alteration of any building and built environment or part thereof including documentation or being in responsible control of professional services which require the development of sites, the architectural design in whole or in part of buildings or built environment, groups of buildings, and also scrutinizing the documents regulating the construction and development of buildings and related matters. So this is very, very clear. This is out there in the open. Yes, there is need for strengthening Yes, there have been articles that, you know, yes, there is need for strengthening. We should have more control over what is the definition of architectural services. What is actually the definition of the profession? But if we go back to how the discussion happened, it is very clear that there was a picture that the engineers are much more in number, right? And because of that, there has been this whole conflict. See, the same person, Mr. S. M. H. Samuel said, Sir, both the engineers and architects have been long waiting for this day when this house and parliament are going to pass this bill. The first engineer in this country came out of college 150 years ago and the first architect in India came out about 30 years ago. Till 1947, there were only 300 qualified architects in the country. Today, as Mr. Yadav has rightly said, there is about 3,000, perhaps more than that. Engineers are now about 100,000. On one side, 3,000. On the other side, 100,000. 50% are civil engineers out of the total engineers. Engineers are also practicing, architect, practicing as architects without the architectural qualifications. When architects believed that their trade must be regulated and no outsider should come and take and step into their shoes and take away their trade, there grew a demand that it was perhaps necessary for architects as well as engineers practicing as architects that some legislation should be brought forward for this purpose. That was insistent demand of the architects at that time, but engineers were not so much in picture. Now, this was circulated among among the states and there were there was a joint committee and there was some kind of a what do you call separate view because they said that engineering and architecture are so embedded in each other almost with one body but like one body with two soul that they can be called Siamese twins. A surgical operation is required to separate the two would neither be possible is and nor, nor is desirable. Each has to be given its own identity and yet each must breathe in unison. That was the task of the Joint Select Committee. There was a vortex 
of these conflictive interests between the engineer and architect the moment this it was started the work was started the definition of architect was the biggest boulder in this the first clause was the definition it said architect means a person qualified to design and supervise the erection of any building now we immediately realize this that this impinged very effectively upon the functions of the engineer building is then engineer's job so there was this discussion and that led to the act where at that time the architects institutes the president said that we should just def not define we should just call ourselves registered architects and it was passed so therefore the supreme court the architects act the supreme court judgment the architects act and the rajya sabha this parliamentary discussion all work in unison and it is only the protection of the title and style of the architect and other people can do the provide the services which an architect would otherwise provide so thank you very much for listening have a nice day